From AfterBuzz TV's Chief Operating Officer, Phil Svitek, comes a weekly digital series that shares his insights, concepts, and findings from years of learning and mentorship. Welcome to Phil Svitek Podcast. Hi, I'm Phil Svitek, AfterBuzz TV's Chief Operating Officer, and I'm making a mission of mine for you to master mental fortitude in order to achieve your creative endeavors. No different than what I aspire to do right here with AfterBuzz TV hosts that I work with directly. First off, I want to acknowledge you for joining me, whether it's your first lesson or not. You're here because you want to gain something, to learn something. Now that certain something might be termed knowledge, but here's something to consider. Ever hear the phrase, ignorance is bliss? Chances are you have. So then let me put it to you this way. If ignorance is bliss, why seek knowledge at all? Why waste your time listening to me talk about theories and concepts? I know from my own experience that sometimes the more I learn, the more confused I am. I wouldn't be shocked if you've listened to my past 20 lessons and scratched your head saying, what the hell is he talking about? We all read books, watch movies, TV shows, and so on in hopes of learning something that will better our lives in some way. But if we are just left confused, then how has that helped us? If you're someone like me, you've probably read a lot and heard the same bit of information over and over, just stated differently. I think the issue lies in how we define knowledge and how we define ignorance. I say I think because anyone who tells you they know doesn't really know, or so I think. Anyway, right off the bat, we've attributed judgment to those words. Ignorance means lack of knowledge or information, while knowledge is facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. One lacks something while the other acquires something. See, the definitions of those two words make it seem like all knowledge is good, but not all knowledge is good because at the end of the day, knowledge is subjective because it is filtered through your own personal experiences and belief systems. It is precisely why two different people can have the same experience and attribute two completely different meanings from the same experience. If there was a third person, she'd have a third perspective of the same situation, different than the first two people. Knowledge, as we learn it and engrave it within ourselves, is filtered through language. And while language can be beautiful, it is a simulacrum. It is a representation of the real, but it is not the real itself. As author Don Miguel Ruiz puts it, if we don't have a word for a chair, a chair is still a chair. It'd be something you can sit on, look at, or touch. Language has an inherent viewpoint, and the way we use it creates stories and eventually our own personal reality. This in turn affects the rest of the world because how we see the world is how we'll project ourselves onto it. Many great thinkers of the past and present have pointed to the voice in our heads as troublesome and not really a voice that is ours at all. They say the voice in your head is separate from you. It is actually you that is the one listening. The real you is silent and observant of the world. This real you sees things for how they really are and not by the lies the voice tells you. But over time, the voice affects you negatively, if you let it. It is why suicides involving firearms are almost always to the head. They are trying to silence the terrible master, the voice that is within them, destroying them from inside out. We call that the power of words because again, words shape your reality. If every idea and word in your head is grim and negative, then that is what you'll perceive the world as. The world will be your personal hell. Conversely, there's some who harness the power of words to see the world as heaven on earth. And it can be that way. What I've come to realize is that ignorance isn't bliss at all because it comes from the word ignore. Just because you ignore the world and its realities doesn't mean that they're not there. As a child, you are innocent, yes, but you are not ignorant. In fact, I would argue you are less ignorant then versus now because you are less bogged down by knowledge. Knowledge has a tendency to create a false security, a false understanding of things. The phrase ignorance is bliss is a false understanding of things and for many creates a sense of security that doesn't actually exist. By ignoring the realities of life, they are more susceptible to them because they're not expectant of what's to come. 
What we seek to obtain is not knowledge. What we should seek is in fact awareness. Awareness of what is so plainly visible to us every day. To pay attention to what's right in front of us, all around us. That is what we really should be after. Awareness is true knowledge, not facts and figures. The type of knowledge that's so commonly shared is the lies of the false prophets, as the Bible would call it. True awareness and understanding requires no explanation. It is a feeling. It's within you, intrinsic and inherent. Your observant self just knows. It is no coincidence why meditation helps so many people. It eliminates the chattering and lying voice in their own head, thereby allowing them a moment of tranquility to observe what is actually real. The more one practices meditation and masters awareness, the more one sees the world as it is without embellishments. False knowledge takes us further and further away from awareness that we once knew as kids. For those that have been seeking this so-called knowledge, this is what they're actually in search of in their lives. And yet blindly, they search for answers their whole lives. Odds are they never obtain this awareness because as life continues, more knowledge clouds them. Those with so-called knowledge seem important because as a society, we've determined their knowledge makes them superior. Knowledge makes people successful. So we've spread this lie throughout society everywhere. But it is a lie. When you have awareness, you have wisdom. The knowledge we tend to uphold is just useless words structured together to make you believe something. Wisdom is the application of your awareness. The truly successful people apply their awareness of the world to create or understand something amazing. Sir Isaac Newton understood the laws of gravity through the simple act of a falling apple on his head. It wasn't knowledge that allowed him to discover that, it was his awareness. So whenever you look at those countless other examples of successful people who have created something amazing, understand that they did so through awareness. They took action in some way, shape, or form. And this brings us to the real point of the lesson because you may have knowledge of a lot of different things, but that doesn't make you successful. You're an artist, you say. Well, great. What are you doing for your art right now? And what about later today? And tomorrow? And the day after that? And so on. Awareness allows you to observe and gain true insight of the world for what it really is, unfiltered, which in turn allows you to do something, and in this case, that's the act of creation. Last week, I talked about the power of a small but loyal fan base, and I suggest that you check out that lesson if you haven't done so already. But in short, one of the takeaways I mentioned was that as an artist, you need to share something meaningful with the world. The more honest and insightful your art is, the more it will resonate with the world. Such a thing can only happen when you're aware. You must understand ignorance is not bliss and the knowledge people have taught you has a viewpoint attached to it that makes it automatically subjective. Don't repeat it in your head, understand it deep within your soul and practice it wholeheartedly every day. Don Miguel Ruiz has a book called The Voice of Knowledge. When I first heard that title, it appealed to me very much. The Voice of Knowledge seemed important and exciting. I wanted to read it, especially because for me, I'm approaching 30 real fast, and they say that 30 is the age of wisdom for a man. Women apparently get there a lot faster. But within the first chapter of the book, I learned it was nothing like what I was expecting. Don Miguel Ruiz equates knowledge to lies and does so by highlighting the story of Adam and Eve. The tree of knowledge is the one where the snake resided. The tree of knowledge was the tree Adam and Eve weren't supposed to eat from. That tree was poisoned by the snake. The poison distorted reality because it made Adam and Eve believe lies. That first chapter made me question the whole idea of knowledge right away, and I realized that what's meant by the phrase 30 is the age of wisdom for a man, is when a man regains his awareness of the world. He comes to terms that the knowledge he's accumulated in life is not true. Women get there faster, so good for them. Of course, the idea that men or women automatically reach an age of awareness and this realization is just another lie, courtesy of knowledge. The reason I gained this awareness is because I heard this lie over and over throughout my life and questioned it every time. Ironically, that's one of the lessons Don Miguel Ruiz teaches us. Doubt but learn to listen. Don't take anything at face value and assume what someone is sharing with you is the capital T truth. 
It's just words and it's their perspective. Also, don't take it personally, even if you assume they mean for you to take it personally. I'll give you an example. There's people in my life that have told me that I have a problem with authority. When you hear this enough times, you start to believe it. But when I start to understand that all knowledge is subjective, and that what I was actually seeking was awareness, I determined for myself that the reason people said I have a problem with authority is because I questioned what they were saying. They wanted me to agree with their viewpoint, but I wasn't ready to buy into it right away. It's not to say what they shared with me didn't have merit or that I never took the advice I got, but it does mean I processed it at my own pace. And sometimes I did disagree or reject certain notions, and I vowed to myself that I'd continue to exercise this type of awareness moving forward because doing so will keep me more aligned with my true spirit. But be careful, I'm not giving you a license to be disrespectful to others. I try always to be respectful whenever people share anything with me, even if I disagree with them. I'm not always successful at it, but I try. And the more aware I am, the easier it is. Let me share something else with you that deals with a piece of knowledge most of us have learned to accept as truth even though it's anything but that. That piece of knowledge is that freedom is choice. If you're an American, you've probably heard this because this nation has built upon this doctrine. I'm sorry, and this doesn't make me unpatriotic, but that's the biggest bullshit ever. Freedom isn't choice. Real freedom comes from the ability to commit to a choice and move towards it, to act on it. There's plenty of people I know who are so overwhelmed by choice that they become paralyzed by it. Then there's people like Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor, that teach us even when you seemingly don't have a choice, you can still commit to happiness and freedom just by the way you act despite the circumstances. How powerful is that? If you're going to commit to anything, might as well be your craft, right? The biggest lesson I learned from the voice of knowledge was to stop seeing imperfection in the world. Regardless of your spiritual or religious beliefs, the world is perfect. You are perfect. But somewhere in our lives, the first bits of knowledge we bought into was that we are somehow not perfect. And hence why we seek knowledge throughout life because we feel that the knowledge we're going after will somehow make us perfect. What makes us perfect is just being us. For that, we have to be aware and act on that awareness. Life is about doing. And if you're an artist, your life is about expressing what you see in the world. Do, do, do. Knowledge is too introspective. It's a dead end that you're too blind to see. You might as well live inside the matrix if you're doing that. Put blinders on and keep practicing your craft and understand that skill and technique is different than knowledge. Skill and technique has a tangible outcome or result. If you're a writer, the words on a page are the result of your skill. If you're a blacksmith, then the sword you create is the physical representation of what you're able to do. But it starts with awareness. Recognize what's around you. Pay attention and understand the things you say and what others say shape your worldview. And when you filter out the lies, you begin to understand again. That's called wisdom. And it'll be evident as honesty in your art. So best of luck. To reinforce this very esoteric episode, here's a few quotes that I think you'll like. To attain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, remove things every day. I know nothing because I know too much and understand not nearly enough and never will. You are divine, you are perfect, but as an artist, you create your own story and you have the illusion that the story is real. You live your life by justifying that story and by justifying the story, you are wasting your life. Knowledge is power? No. Knowledge on its own is nothing, but the application of useful knowledge, now that is powerful. Do question even the basics. You will be a fool for once. If you don't, you will be for a lifetime. There is much that I do not know, and I'd like to know even less. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. The goal of education is not to increase the amount of knowledge, but to create the possibilities for a child to invent and discover, to create men who are capable of doing new things. To know is to know that you know nothing. That is the meaning of true knowledge. Before you click away to another lesson of mine, here's a few more things. First, my producer Juliet Bieber is away in New York this week. She is missed, but she'll be back next week. In the meantime, if you'd like to review this lesson, a transcript 
is available on my website. A link is below. Please be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode, and of course, tell your friends and family about it. Leave a comment with your thoughts and opinions and what lessons you'd like to see me tackle next. The more specific you are with your questions, the better I can answer them. Also, you can support the show on patreon.com slash philsvitek if it doesn't burden you financially in any way. Every contribution is truly appreciated and helps defray the cost of putting on this show, which, as you can probably imagine, takes a lot of effort. To be notified when future episodes release, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever other platform is most convenient to you. The specific links are provided below. Lastly, if you're interested in joining AfterBuzz TV as either a host or an intern, visit AfterBuzz TV's contact page. A direct link is provided. Or, of course, you can tweet at Phil Svitek or Instagram at Bonjour Juliet. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with another lesson of mine. Bye.